Throughout history, the tank has retained a series of aspects we might consider essential for such a vehicle. Armor, tracks, and a rotating turret. While some parts may not always be present, wheels instead of tracks, or a fixed gun mount rather than a turret, one will always find a tank equipped with some sort of armor. This raised the interest of one Henry Wallace, who took the definition of a tank to perhaps its most extreme, a vehicle that moved not on tracks, not on wheels, nor with some half-track configuration. Mr. Wallace submitted a patent for perhaps the world's first unipedal tank, a tank that hopped on a single leg. Hello and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Wood, and today I'll be covering the Wallace Leaping Tank, an American one-legged tank design. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content, and any help will be greatly appreciated. Naturally, every tank must have some compromises. Armor cannot be equally distributed and must be concentrated on the area most likely to take fire, the front. Similarly, a gun mounted in a turret can only engage targets from one direction at a time. Likewise, a tank with tracks or wheels has to turn or reverse to change direction. All these compromises mean that tanks are more exposed to flanking fire and are slow to react. Enter one Henry Wallace from Freeport, New York, not to be confused with current Vice President Henry Wallace. Little is known about the man. He may have been born around 1918 to 1920 and might have been a serving U.S. soldier at the time he submitted the design to the patent office. Wallace's design envisioned a circular fighting compartment, with firepower and armor thus equally distributed. Mobility was provided by a single leg extending from the center of the fighting compartment. Wallace believed that this would allow the vehicle to oscillate move, meaning the tank would be able to move forwards, backwards, sideways, irrespective of enemy positions or flanking attacks. Wallace submitted his design in October of 1942 and was granted the patent in March 1945. Unfortunately for Mr. Wallace, the U.S. military had no interest in the concept, and the leaping tank remained strictly a paper project. The primary body of the tank was saucepan-shaped. The lid of this saucepan was a small cabin in which the driver sat. With a vision port to the front and the ability to rotate 360 degrees, the driver would be able to see where he was going regardless of the direction. Externally, the circular body was broken up by six gun positions equally distributed around the circumference. Each gun had an arc of fire of about 45 degrees, meaning that the only blind spots would be a few small areas to the immediate sides of each gun position. Internally, the roof and the floor of the saucepan held supporting beams. Beneath the fighting compartment sat some of the mechanical components for the leg of the vehicle. Within the center of the fighting compartment sat the leg of the vehicle. To protect the mobility of the vehicle from enemy fire when stationary, this leg would be retracted into the fighting compartment and the tank could sit stationary, acting as a sort of pillbox. When the tank needed to move, the leg would be moved slightly in the direction of travel before explosively jumping the tank upwards and forwards in the direction. Explosively being the literal term here, since rather than using hydraulics to extend the leg, Wallace suggested releasing fuel into the cylinders that formed the leg and then detonating this fuel using a cartridge to propel the vehicle. What effect this would have on the crew inside was not expanded upon, but one hopes that seatbelts would be provided. While the crew size was not specified, a crew of at least eight or so men would have been required. One man per gun, the driver, and a commander. There were several problems with this method of movement. The first issue was ground pressure. Since the entire weight of the tank would be concentrated on a single point of ground, the leg would be liable to sink into the ground as the leg extended, or impaling the ground on landing. If the leg sank while the body was off the ground, the tank was likely to fall over as the point of balance shifted. This leads to a second problem. Balance. The issue of tipping over was magnified if the vehicle moved on anything other than a flat surface. Measurements indicated that the tank would become unstable if it moved on anything steeper than a 10 degree slope. Wallace tried to compensate for this issue by stating it would use a gyroscopic stabilization device to keep the tank balanced, but how effective this would have been is unknown. The third problem was speed. Aside from leaping, the tank only had a few limited ways of moving. The leg had limited movement when the main body was on the ground, and so the tank would slowly move as the leg moved the body to a new forward position as it extended before then being retracted. The tank could also be dragged by applying the minimum amount of pressure to the leg to allow it to move the body forwards. While a top speed was not specified, it was probably no faster than walking pace. Alongside this lackluster mobility was a rather disappointing armor layout. Because of weight considerations and the concept of every location being equally well protected, 
the armor would not likely have been able to stop anything heavier than a rifle or machine gun caliber bullet. The tank would likely have no defense against contemporary tanks or anti-tank guns, except for, I guess, the element of surprise. Firepower, as mentioned, was provided by six guns at equidistant points around the main body. While this distribution prevented the tank from becoming disadvantaged by flanking attacks, in a typical combat scenario, only two-thirds of the tank's firepower could be used. Poorly armored for a bunker, and poorly armored for a tank, Mr. Wallace's design may have been slightly less preposterous had he gone for a more conventional mobility system. As it was, the one-legged design would prove a disappointment, unworkable on anything less than solid, level ground. The novelty of the design quickly gave way to the practical realities of armored combat. This design was one of many concepts made by a public eager to contribute to or profit from the war. Unfortunately for Mr. Wallace, his design did neither. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and a subscription. You can find more information relating to the Leaping Tank in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.